Well, hello everybody. This is Ann, or Grandma Ann, or whatever you want to call me. Uh, back to do yet another pouring of acrylic paint. And I've actually got a project I want to try out. My son and I are addicted to... Oops, there we go the Starbucks coffees you can get at Walmart and such. This is one of the smaller jars. But I did clean it up quite a bit. Managed to pull all the um, labels off of it and got the um, the sticky stuff off. Which I've discovered if y'all want to try if this works and y'all want to try it uh, the trick to getting the glue off of the bottles is um, fingernail polish remover uh, the kind that has the acetone you don't want acetone free let me adjust this a little bit there we go um, the acetone is what helps take it off so just a paper towel and some of that stuff and it comes off nice and clean what I'm not sure of is if the paint will stick to just the glass itself or should I put a coat of glue on it first to kind of, I know, I just went to all the trouble to take the uh, original glue off of it. But this would be a controlled gluing. So... I guess we can try an experiment where I would do half the bottle with the um, the glue on, do two sides with glue, and leave the other two just plain. And I'm thinking about taping off this part. And then we'd stand it on end like that, mix our paints, and then Bloop. Pour it over the top. See what happens. I mean, if it turns out good, I got a whole mess of these bottles laying around. So I think they would make pretty vases. So rather than pour paint inside and roll it all around and everything, well, then you can't. You can't do anything with them, but if you can paint the outside, then you can put water in it and, and have flowers in it, fresh flowers. So, that's what we're going to try today, painting the glass bottle. So I guess the first thing I should do, and of course, well, you know, I wonder if some gesso, hey... There's an idea. I could try painting it with some gesso. Let's see, what does this say? Surface preparation for acrylics and oils creates a white matte surface with a slight tooth which may be smoothed by sanding. Apply with a roller, paint pad, or brush to almost any grease-free semi porous surface e.g. hardboard before painting suitable for interior and exterior use well I mean what the heck couldn't hoit right so let me smush this up some and Oh, I know what I want to do, too. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and tape off. I just got regular old packing tape here. I figure if I do a few strips. Probably should have prepped all this beforehand, huh? I'm sorry, guys. 
Alright, let's try going this way. That looks like that might actually work. So, of course, don't you know I'm starting to get low on tape. While I'm doing this, I, I suppose I can apologize to everybody for taking so doggone long to put out another video. And the reason for it is we had a freezer malfunction, sort of. Um, my son who I don't know how I would get through everyday life without him, put something in our upright freezer, but didn't close the door all the way. So 24 hours later, he goes down to retrieve what he had put in there and discovered that a lot of things had defrosted. They were still very cold, but they were definitely defrosted. So, not wishing to have to throw everything out, and we certainly couldn't eat all that. I'm looking for my... Hmm. I'm looking for my exacto knife. And it doesn't seem to be in here. Oh, that stinks. Well, but I do have new blades. Maybe I can just be really, really careful and not cut myself, right? <laughs> well, let's get this out and see how talented I am, right? So we take, so what I want to do is now that I've got the, the tape around the edge of the bottle, ooh, i got a bunch of these. Okay, so that's just one. Now that I have the tape around the edge of the bottle, I'm going to have a nice clean edge. So, let's see how talented I am. Ooh, glad my finger wasn't down there. Or there. Hmm. Alright. So see if that's gonna... Ah, you booger. Oh, I still got a bit of glass there that's not covered. Okay. That was there. <laughs> Getting little pieces of tape stuck all over me. Get over there. Get off! I'm going to put it in there. So, Alright, it looks like I managed to cut it okay. No? Yep, there we go. Are you getting terribly bored yet? So anyway, going back to my story about the freezer disaster, uh, we were successful in salvaging everything by way of canning. I have 
what I refer to as Big Scary Beast, also known as, known as my uh, big pressure canner. You know, that one that we're all afraid is going to blow up our kitchens? Yeah, well, it doesn't, and it didn't. And I managed to save everything. Even created what my husband is determined to be the best vegetable beef soup I've ever made. And he's a pretty fussy eater to begin with. Well, hey, look at that. I did it. Okay. So, I'm always persnickety about cleaning up after myself before it gets out of hand. I am this. I'm not OCD by any means, but because I have such a small space to work in, uh, my favorite workshop, which is my king size bed, where I spend most of my time anyway. So I think I shall keep this out tape hey, just in case I need it again. Let's put the blade back. So we don't have any accidental accidents with it. Uh, there we go. I'll have to find the handle to this thing, that's for sure. But don't need that. Alright, so now I was going to paint our bottle with the gesso. So let me pop this thing up. Put a little bit in here. Shouldn't take very much at all. And I just love paper towels, especially my Viva paper towels. It's nice and thick. And I don't mind blowing my nose on it once in a while because it's soft. All right. So there's the gesso. Ha! Paintbrush, paintbrush, paintbrush. I want something nice and smooth, don't you know? I just had him put away, him being Matt, some sponge brushes. He's gonna kill me. <laughs> Let me get him on, get him in here. Bless his heart. Oh, come on, Paul. One ringy dingy. Who remembers that? <laughs> that was Lily Tomlin as the telephone person, telephone company person. Ah, there he is. Um, don't you know, I came up with a reason to need at least one of those um, sponge brushes, which just happens to be in the gray paint box under the tray. Bring two just in case. And say hello to everybody. I've been bragging on you. Hello. <laughs> Such enthusiasm. Oh lordy. You know what? Um, I'm going to vote that we leave the door open because it's it is getting a little too warm in here. But you know that two of them come out. Well, then keep her in your room, please. We have a kitty who is very nosy. Oh, okay. So, all right. Let's... I guess I should put some gloves on, huh? At least one. So I don't get it all over myself. You know what? 
I very rarely do this, but I'm going to try to get, ooh, okay, maybe not. My hand seems to be a little swollen today. Ordinarily, I don't take my rings off, my wedding rings, for anything, because they went missing for about 18 months, almost. So ever since we found them, I've even had surgery and other medical procedures where they say, you have to remove your ring. And I say, you'll only be getting them off of my cold, dead body because they ain't coming off. Okay, so let's get this in here. And you know what? Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and do the whole bottle. Because I really want this to be successful. So I'll just do the whole thing. And we'll find out some other time how successful I might have been without treating the bottle. Of course, you know I'm going to just slap myself for not um, prepping more than one bottle, because I didn't. And if this turns out as good as I suspect it will, you know I'm going to want to do more. But I don't have more prepared. So, shame on me. That hey, maybe if this turns out good, one or two or five of you all will give it a try as well. Um, I did have a couple of you ask questions about the paints I use and this, that, and the other thing, so I figured. I will go ahead and address that issue as well. Um, when I first started with my first pour, one thing that I did wind up spending a lot of money on was the pouring medium. That's the stuff that you mix your paint with to thin it out some. Because when it comes out of the tube or the bottle, it just really is not the consistency that we want it to be before we pour. I did learn that not only from Anne Marie, but from other artists. Oops. Kitty hair. Miss Pua's. I had two cats. We have Pua who is a long-haired cat, or at least long for us. She's also a thief. She likes to steal things. And then we have the old man, Loki, that she likes to torment. All right, and since I'm gonna do the bottom, pour from the bottom, I guess I should paint the bottom, huh? Alright, so getting back to what I was talking about, the pouring medium. So I went out and I spent a bunch of money. Oh, swell. I painted myself into a corner, so to speak. Don't have my other glove on. <laughs> I'm a dum dum. Well, okay. It is on a rack, so. That should dry. Let's move it out of the way. We'll let that dry. And I wonder if I can get this back in the bottle. Because I really don't want to waste it. Um, so, like I said, I spent a lot of money on this very expensive pouring medium. 
and it turned out after watching many other artists doing the same thing that all you need is some Elmer's glue and distilled water definitely had more than I needed. Uh, the formula for the Elmer's glue and distilled water is 50-50. So, I'll show you what I did. As soon as I finish with this. And, well, I guess you'll just sit in that cup. Now, get on there. Okay, so there's the gesso. Use that. It's drying. Um, where is, oh, here's that cup. So here's what I did. I took one of these, you know, plastic cups. Let me see how many ounces is this. This is 16 ounce cups from Walmart. Um, 50 cups to a bag. I do not remember how much they were. I'm sorry. But I do this. do that I believe I set this in something smaller maybe even one of my candy jars well we know it wasn't that one <laughs> um this one. Well, you know what? That would work. So, you get a jar that's, when you set this in, it's a little smaller, like that. And then I took permanent marker and marked all the way around. Make sure it's in there straight. But I marked all the way around. Creating that line. See it? So it doesn't even matter what, you know, what the measurement is. Because, like I said, three parts glue. Ah! I had the wrong recipe. Wow, good thing I wrote it down here. Three parts, so up to here, three times with the glue to one part of water. So three of these and of glue and one with water. And that will make your blending medium. This is Gold Peak Great Brewed Taste. It was um, a bottle of iced tea that I got from Walmart. But it makes a great holding bottle for this. You know? I wish I had thought about it at the time, but even though the cup is a good idea, a good starting point, once I got it mixed, you know, like once I had the three parts of glue, I should have made that mark. And then with the one part of water, make that mark. Huh. Well, next time when I need to make some more. And actually, I think this was doubled because I did start up like up here. I've used it a couple of times. <coughs> So, 
and I wish I could remember what the measurement is on this. But anyway, so three parts Elmer's glue, or I understand you can also use Mod Podge because it's a glue of sorts also. Or if you just want to make small amounts at a time. Okay, that's my hair. Go away, hair. Hair and paint don't mix real well. Well, I guess they could if you wanted to put it in there on purpose. Um, so that's a blending medium. A lot more affordable. The, and, and you can get big, huge bottles of Elmer's glue and and mix it up. Another tool that I got, is you can get the little kits from Walmart that have all these um, tools. And they're handy and all that, but little on the small side for me. Okay. So I went into the cake decorating department and got me this. Um, it's a, a frosting spreader. And boy does this work great. And in fact I'm going to check. To, I think they've got a bigger one as well. But this comes in real handy, and, and I'll, I'll show you, if not today, certainly on another video. But, I mean, these also help a little bit, too. So I keep it around just in case. I also got me these paintbrushes. For when I do want to do large covering and I'm actually going to paint it on. This brush is one and a half inches and this is a two inch. Um, again, not expensive. You know, I know you get what you pay for, but you don't have to get ridiculous. Unless you can afford it. In which case I say, go forward, do great things. But that's what I've got. Push pins. Really important. And I'll show you why. I learned the hard way that when your painting is finished, if, like if you've done it on a canvas or on one of those little paint boards, um, not a good idea to, you know, put something like that down and and lay your, here's one, well, yeah, here's one, and put it like that to dry, because they stick to it really bad. So when you lift it up, this comes up with you. And when you go to take the, um, the stick off, it messes up your edge where the paint got stuck to it to the bottom so this wasn't a good idea right here what is a good idea is Anne Marie's idea push pins you stick one in each corner and I can even show you if I can reach it I, 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 I. Get these out of the way. Can you see them? Push pins. And what that does is it gives them feet. Well, booger. Anyway, you get the idea. They, they make feet. And that little bitty surface here, can you see that? 
here we go this little surface right here is a heck of a lot easier to get off of the blob of paint that's likely to gather under them as they're drying than trying to get off one of these big sticks without making a mess okay so push pins are our friends um that's one of my first paintings that y'all probably remember actually i think i like it better that way i don't know but then what I don't like on this is this. This stuff. I, I, I don't even remember what was going on. I bet I could cover that up with a little extra core on it and fix that because I really, really, really don't like it. It just doesn't matter how you turn this. It, it doesn't fit. Know what I mean? So, if it doesn't fit, you must have quit. Ooh. Okay. That thing to say, considering he's in the news again. So, moving on. Let me put that aside. Um, then I saw somebody that was using... Are you done? A good old cookie cooling rack or cake cooling rack whatever you want to call it this one is great because going back to the feet the squares are big enough that you can put your feet on here and then they fit in the squares So your paint will still run off, but then you can pick it up and you still got your feet on it already when you go to move it to let it dry. Now one thing I did discover with these smaller blocks, this is, what is this, 3 by 3 you kind of have to put it a little cockeyed sort of because it doesn't exactly line up with, yeah, that'd be like that, with the squares to get, anyway, that's pretty thick, isn't it, three by three, and then this is an inch, so technically, if the wood wasn't stretched over, I mean, the canvas wasn't stretched over the wood, it'd be, looks like four and a half by four and a half, but, anyway, I digress. Alright, so, meanwhile, back at the ranch, let's see how, well, hey, she's a dry, alright, well, now we can get busy with mixing our paint, and get some things out of my way here. I don't need right now and things I do. Alright, so. I need to decide what colors I want to do. And I wish y'all could talk to me. It's a small object. So I don't want to get too crazy. Um, and I'm I'm thinking about my granddaughters. I had two adorable little granddaughters. One is six, and she is Charlotte too yet. Wow, that's pretty bad when Grandma doesn't even know how old her her baby is. Her birthday is December fifth, so I think she's gonna be three. Yes, that sounds. No, that doesn't sound right. Yeah. I don't know. Charlotte's either going to be two or three. Shame on Grandma. So, let's mix this up some. 
because it is glue and water. So, I think that's all nicely blended. When you look inside, yeah. You know what? I think Matthew's right about something too. I need to get my apron all the way up. I don't remember what it says. Really cool grandma. Looks like what? Oh, this is what a really cool grandma looks like. Well, let me let y'all in on a little secret. You may wonder how come I go out of my way to not have my face in the shots as much as possible. Well, unfortunately, thanks to some health issues, um, this year I started losing my teeth. And I mean like three of them just dropped right out of my head within a week. And of course they're all up front so as I sometimes say I lost my smile. I didn't lose my desire to smile or my ability to smile but I am I will admit I am embarrassed. Now, the good news is, very soon, I will be getting that fixed. I have a wonderful dentist, uh, but we were having to wait on funding in order to pull this off. Because, yes, I'm going to have to have dentures. I believe he's doing a full denture on top, and I want to say a a partial on the bottom. He's doing some kind of fancy dentistry. But it will be nice to not only get my smile back, but have the ability to eat. And getting creative with uh, foods and things, especially when you don't realize how important those front teeth are, especially the uppers, to try to bite something. So, anyway. So that's why the, you know, from the chin or the neck or the shoulders down. As soon as I get my teeth, my, my pretty new teeth, don't you know I'll be showing it off like crazy. So, in the meantime, back to our project. Um, I'm going to start with some white. And because I use white so often, I do get these nice big bottles. This is uh, Daler and Rowney Simply Acrylic. White number 011. So I'm going to carefully, because I don't want a whole lot of bubbles, just kind of rattle it around a little bit. I don't know if these guys separate or not. But... Who wants to take a chance, right? So, I'm not going to make a whole bunch because it's a little bottle. So, let's, let's put that much in. Remember, I'm going to be adding the uh, medium to it. Oh, you can't see that. It's off camera. So, put that away, and then I have two shades of pink, you see these, there's that one, and there's that one, gosh the lighting is terrible isn't it, it's just terrible. that helps. Not so much, huh? That's something else I'm going to fix. I'm going to get me a good camera and a microphone and 
everything else. So I got two shades of pink. I've got a really pretty green I could do. Got some turquoise. Hmm. They both are crazy for pink, so we know. I think I'll go with this magenta color. So we'll remove that. And take out the green. Take out the blue and the turquoise. Let's see what else do I have. What else do I have that would go with it? I don't. Well, the yellow might work. I have some yellow. Um. Oh, what the heck. Take a chance, right? I mean, I got a ton of these bottles. Granted, they're not ready for working with, but such is life. All right. So, white, let's put in a squirt of yellow, and again, don't need to make a whole bunch, because it's just a little bottle. So, that should be plenty. And again, I've got, when I first started out, I bought these guys. Also from Daler and Rowney, or Roni. Simply acrylic. These tubes of paint. Acrylic paint. That artists that do, you know, landscapes and all that kind of stuff. Um, they use these tubes. And, and I got small ones because I didn't know if I would like doing this particular technique. Well, yes, I do. And then I found out I don't have to spend a lot of money for these kind of paints when I can get the big bottles like these or I can get little bottles like these. Once again, I can't see them because it's bad lighting. So, don't have to spend a lot of money for your paints. Just got to make sure they're acrylics. Water-based acrylic. Okay, so the yellow. Now we'll add in the magenta. Oops. Whoops. And up there you. And get this out of the way. So let's mix up our magenta a little bit. All right. Pop the top. I'm sure I'm going to wind up with some left over after pouring the bottle. But that's okay because I have canvas. <laughs> Alright, so now. Now we start adding our blending medium. And one of you had asked. You know, what the consistency is. Um, I don't exactly know. I pour a little bit in. I start mixing it. And Anne Marie says that it should be like um, the consistency of yogurt or cream. Did I get all this mix? I absolutely love these cups because you really can see whether you done, you know, mixed it good or not. You know what? I have an extra bottle here somewhere. What did I do with that? Extra one of these. I'm going to pour some of this medium 
into this bottle. Really easy. Here. There we go. A little easier to control how much I'm going to put into these cups. And I'll write on the bottle later what it is. Because I label everything. And I do want to put just a smidge more. Oh, that's much easier. Okay. Voila. Now, that seems to be much creamier. Can you see that? See how it just continually flows? That's what we want. Okay, so magenta's done. Now we're going to do yellow. So again, just kind of squirt some in there. Grab a stick and stir it up. Now, while I'm sitting here, I'm also trying to decide if I want to try to get any of those pretty cells, as everybody calls them. Um, sort of like paint bursts when you add silicone to your paint. Um, makes a really pretty lacy effect. Alright, let's see. Um, I think we're almost there. One more squirt. Maybe two. Alright, let's see. That's better. That's good. Okay, yellow's done. Last but not least, the white. Boy, I got a lot of it, don't I? Hmm. I guess I'll be making a second video. Right now, let's just... Let's just stick with this one project. which is how to make a painted glass vase out of a coffee bottle. Uh, yeah, I think a little smidge more. I put an awful lot of paint in there. One thing I do have that I cheat with is this little booger. You see that? Normally you use this to mix um, your um, powdered drinks. It's uh, battery operated. And it comes in quite handy actually when when um, mixing a large amount of paint for this nah don't need it so I cheat a little bit that looks pretty darn good alright so now I don't want to mess up a fourth cup to create my pouring thing. Hmm. Yeah, why not? 
This is an awful big cup, though. Well, it is what it is. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start layering. Of course, once it starts running down the sides, no telling what we get. But let's start with some white on the bottom. And then some, some pink. And I'm not going to worry about the silicone bu bubbles. And then maybe a little more white. Now some yellow. You know what? Maybe I'll put a little silicone in the yellow. Let me show you what I did. I cheated, y'all. Um, one thing, my can of silicone, which y'all have been asking me about, is this stuff. Uh, get it at any automotive parts store. My husband happens to uh, work for... Who do you work for? <laughs> okay. Total brain fart. Anyway, he's a delivery driver for one of those chain stores. And so he brought some of this stuff home with for me. And it was supposed to have one of those little straws that, you know, you stick in here. Sort of like the uh, WD-40 does. But I guess somebody stole my straw. So what I did was got one of these bottles, put on a mask. There's my mask. Put that on and still held my breath. And after I shook it up real good, sprayed it into the bottle and then capped it real quick made you know i'm well ventilated because i got span going and everything it's a large room so everything was good and safe but i think i'm going to add some and it's just a little bit and we'll see See what happens. I might get some cells and I might not. So here we go. I'm going to add some yellow over there and some yellow over there and some yellow over here. Okay. And one more dose of white. Oh, what the heck. Let's put some in the white, too. What did I do with it? Yeah, here it is. We'll put a little bit in the white, too. This should be interesting, y'all. Let's mix that up. Okay. I hope this is going to be enough to cover the bottle. What do you think? Some more pink? I think so too. I think so too. Just kind of drizzle it around. 
Alright, that's enough. Well, alrighty. I think we're ready to do this. I should probably put on the other glove. Wish I had a drum roll. Okay. I'm going to turn that upside down. Please don't fall over. Now, you won't be able to see it, but you have to kind of pour it from a distance in order to get the bubbles or the, the cells. However, I'm a little nervous about that because it'll splatter. And here we go. Just keep pouring, and pouring. Now, why does it seem like I didn't mix them up? <laughs> well, hmm. Try moving this around. We do have some up here on the lid. You know, I probably should have done a base color first. And then... Yeah, because there's like nothing on this other side. Ay, ay, ay. Gotta be a better way to do this, wouldn't you say? Hmm. I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> Anne Marie, I wish you were here. Okay. Well. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out how to get it off my fingers. Stand it back up. Oi, oi, oi. Hey, Matt! <laughs> Help! Now, don't you know, on this one, I'm getting some phenomenal cells. Why won't you do this on a canvas? Holy man, Matt! Well, Matt, I mean, even in the cup, I'm getting some awesome cells, and I can't even. Here, let me turn this around so you can at least. Ah, I'm, I'm ruining this. My project's not turning out so good. And my son is not listening to me. Probably got his headphones on. I just want... Ay, ay, ay. Alright. I'm going to wind up with a big... Well... I have more of these. So I guess I'll sacrifice it. And it is water-based. So. Not quite sure how I'm going to handle this. Huh. You know what? I do have one of these little spongy guys. 
Let me see if I can move this so I can get to ah figures. Aha. Uh -huh. Can I Trying to hang on to it. It's a slip and slide, that's for sure. Well, what I'm doing is I've got one of these little sponge pouncer things, and in between the drips, You know, I really should just try to get a hold of Matt to come and wash this off. And we start over. Well, maybe not. What I'm doing is I'm trying to paint in between the drips. And it's kind of sort of working. Kind of sort of. I'm deciding that I also need to have a, <clears throat> a lazy Susan so that I can do this sort of thing and turn it. Because there's no graceful way of turning it. Of course, now down at the very bottom, we don't care because that's where the tape is. Thank goodness. All right, let's see if I can do a little more fill in here. I mean, I suppose I could try doing this with a brush, but I don't think I would get the same effect. Get on there. Because a little pouncer thing, now what I could do is use one of these guys to keep it steady somewhat so I can actually pounce. There we go. Just using the old noodle every now and then. As soon as I get all the stuff filled in, I will of course show you what it did. Okay. Get in there sideways. Well, this seems to be working okay for the the bigger bare spots, but I think I'm going to have to use a brush for the smaller ones. Yeah. So, which one do I want? Yeah, I'll take this one. And pull up some of that. Pull that in. Okay, that's, that's working for me. something else I did is I bought me a pack of inexpensive towels kitchen towels 
And I'm really glad I did. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm picking up from the puddle that formed underneath it and filling in the bare spots and it's turning out kind of cool. I can't wait to show it to you. Alright. I can even grab some off the tape and put it up here. This is why I need a lazy Susan. There we go. Turn it around, son. Oh, don't fall over. Oh. Put your cap on. Yeah, painting with this one. Whoops. Painting with this one, holding with this one. Alright, so we'll get some more here. You know, the brush is actually, I think, working a little better than the pouncer. You know, the little sponge thing over here. Okay. And I wish I had some music on or something to keep you all entertained. Alright, now here I could probably use the pencil. Because that ain't looking right. I think I've pretty much got it all covered. So now, what I would like to do... Oh, I know. I need a cup with some water in it. There it is. to put my brushes in. Right, you're not dirty, you're just on the end there. I want to try something kind of fun. I'm going to get out my torch. This does is supposed to make the cells pop or bring them out, but <laughs> I bet the fans getting in the way. Cause I ain't seeing it. Well, maybe a little bit. Oh, there's some. Hello. Some little itty bitty ones. 
That's all I ever get is little itty bitty ones. Am I not putting enough stuff in my paint or what? Of course, I didn't put very much in this one. I know that. Well, that's what I got. Doesn't look like much right now, does it? And I don't have a real graceful way of getting it to somewhere to dry. That wasn't real smart. I'll tell you what I'll do, though. Um, I won't bore you with the details now. Um... I'll figure out how to fix this later, and when I do, I will come back with the finished product, I hope. <laughs> but in the meantime, I thank you for joining me and for watching me experiment. Um, I will get back to some more normal stuff, but I just, I had to try it, you know? And I'm still not done. Uh, maybe the trick would be to, to pour pour into a pan and then just kind of roll the bottle into it. There's some way, there's got to be a way to turn these bottles into something beautiful. But, apparently not this time. <laughs> Who knows? It might surprise us once it dries. But thank you all very much for joining me, and I look forward to your comments. Please give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, tap on the old subscribe button. And I, I, I was it was recommended that I pick a day to make my own. So I'm going to pick Tuesday. Every Tuesday, I will try to make sure I get a video out to you all. Alright, well, thank you for joining me, and TTFN, ta-ta for now. <laughs>